Hello there and welcome to Art and Self. I am Cindy Ingram, your host and the founder of Art Class Curator, the Curated Connections Library, and the Art Connection Circle. In this podcast, we experience the range and depth of what it means to be human, seen through our connections and conversations about intriguing works of art. These art conversations are here to show you that art is here for you as a catalyst, a challenger, a coach, and a comfort. If you love listening to these insightful conversations and you want to be a part of them, I would love to welcome you into the Art Connection Circle. You can get more information at artandself.com slash circle, or just click the link in the show notes. Hello, it's Cindy Ingram, and I am here today for a solo update, and I know I have been not doing very well on my word of the year updates, so I thought I would do a little bit of an update on that and talk a little bit about the concept of knowing yourself better and what that gives you and what that provides you in life. And I've been thinking about this a lot because, um, as you may know, I have uh, two cohorts of the Art Connection Circle uh, open for enrollment for the summer. One of them is in June and July, and the other one is in July and August. And one of the main things that really happens in the Art Connection Circle is that you really get to know yourself better and you get to know yourself well. And I've been trying to think about like, well, why do you even want to get to know yourself better? I mean, I know it's like my body knows, uh, my heart knows, my experience knows, but like, how do you, how do you articulate that, um, to tell someone like what that actually does for you? And, um, especially if you might think you already know yourself, like, what is there more to know? But I'm, I'm of the mind that there is always more to learn about ourselves, that there's so much in the depths of who we are um, that we can learn about and explore and then try to embody and create a level of authenticity, which gives us a whole other host of things, which I talk about a lot on the podcast. I can think about a lot of episodes where we've talked about authenticity. I've talked about it with Lynn Carpenter. We talked about it with um, uh, Chris Bonello, with uh, Alison Crow, um, lots of people. And Yola Mimetti, we talked about authenticity. It's just kind of this theme, theme in my life lately that is showing up again and again and again. And, you know, as far as my art word of the year update, um, you know, artist is my word of the year. And I have been um, over the course of the last year. In two days, it will be my anniversary from the day I joined my writing group. So, you know, you know I talk about my writing group all the time because I'm obsessed with it. Um, but I, I've joined this writing group uh, May 6th, 2022. And in that year, I wrote a whole book. And two days before um, my anniversary, I'm finishing the book. I, this week, I wrote the final chapter and I wrote the epilogue. And I now am halfway through writing the introduction. And then that is done. That is the final thing left to write for my first draft. And it is wildly exciting. Um, I think it'll hit me more once I finish that introduction and I am officially done with the first draft because I'm so close to it. But when I finished part two, I broke down into tears because it was just really profound. But also in that time of this this one year period, I also um, did a whole other book, which is my art journal. So you, you all know I've been creating this art journal. Um, I started it in October and try you know I it took me from like months before October to actually get to the point where I was making it but I started in October and I'm finishing my written book at the same time as I'm finishing my art journal I'm uh, a few pages from the end of my art journal before I of course grab another one and start the process all over again um but it, through this process of writing this book and creating this art journal, I have learned so much about myself. One being because my book is a memoir, 
because it is about me. I have had to really dig deep into the depths of my gut and my heart and my soul and my knees and my toes. Like I've pulled everything out and flipped myself inside out and like printed it onto the page. Um, I'm flailing my arms around as if you can actually see this. But um, that, that process of getting to know myself through creating art has been really really profound and I just um I have a lot to say about it and I'm going a hundred different directions so I'm just gonna let it flow and hopefully it makes sense it might be one of those ADHD moments where I, I ping pong around for a while but I had a meeting with my book coach today Heather Doyle Frazier who's been on the podcast before uh, episode 106 and we were talking about you know we're at the I'm at the stage where people are going to be reading it and um And we were talking about how, you know, you can't control how someone receives it. You can't control what they get from it. You can't control how it makes them feel. You know, you can you can put yourself into it and your own intention into it. But what happens on the other end, you can't control. And I'm like, oh, shoot, this is so weird to be on the other, <laughs> other end. And because usually I'm the one receiving the art and looking at the art and getting my own meaning from it. And that's what we do in the Art Connection Circle is we look at art and we find our own meaning and we, we feel our own feelings and it's it's really profound but then there's always this conversation of of course we're not saying this is what the artist thought of course in in, in in this podcast is the same way it's not like i'm not putting words into the artist's mouth i'm not saying this is the true meaning of the artwork what i'm saying is this is what i feel and this is what i'm getting from it and this is um how i'm receiving it and the artist may have thought something completely different. And that's totally fine. That both can be true. And to be on the artist side of that is so new and so different. And so I have have been telling you um I about how I wanted to start painting. I think I, I think I told you. I know I talked about it in the episode with Kate Wurzel and we have a part two we've already recorded it, but we talk about it again in, in part two. I haven't published it yet. But um how I've been wanting to paint tonight. I've had this feeling like I needed to paint. I also know in the, the last chapter of my book is about my own art making, which I ended up being about my art journal, but I've been wanting to paint and wanting to paint. I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. And I, I did the same level of stalling <laughs> that I did for my art journal. I was like, okay, I got to have the right supplies. And then I kind of have the right time. And I got to kind of really, um, feel like it's the right time and feel like it's the right place and feel like I have the right amount of stuff and I have to have the right equipment. I've got to have this, I got to have an easel, of course, and then I've got to have, oh, maybe I need to order some more paint because I don't have these particular colors and, you know, it's like all of this stuff. And so I finally did. I got the supplies. And then one day I was in the creativity cocoon and we, we used to do these um, sessions on Mondays that was like um, um, setting intentions for the week. And uh, I was in the session and I was like writing about how I was stalling on this painting. And I was kind of journaling about it. And I was like, what am I doing? Why am I stalling? I need to go up and do it. So I just stopped what I was doing. I transferred my the Zoom meeting over to my iPad, went upstairs. And I just like, I'm starting my painting right now um, in that cocoon session. And so I did. I, I, like, I went up there and I was like, okay, I'm going to start. And... I decided what I would do is I would really follow my intuition and I was going to, um, I'm going to just do whatever my intuition guides me to do. Cause that's what I've, oh, excuse me. that's what I've been learning in my, um, art journal is to just really be in touch with what feels right to do next and let the artwork tell me what to do next. And so I started this painting and I'll share with you the painting. I have not shared it with the painting to anybody. I'm just scared to, um, and, and that's another thing Heather and I were talking about in, in our call just now was that um, she was like, I really think you should show this painting in your epilogue. She was like, this is a really powerful painting. I think you should do it. And she was like, she even wants it to be on the cover. <laughs> I was like, oh God, I don't. But I haven't shared it with anybody yet because I'm too scared. Because, you know, the art journal, it's safe. The art journal is like, oh, it's just I'm playing around, you know, right? I can take a picture, I can share. It's like, I'm just playing around. But with a painting, it's like, oh, I made a painting. You know, it's like a 36 by 36 inch painting. It's big and it's serious. It's a painting. Um, so <laughs> I was terrified to share it. Um, um, what was I even talking about? Oh, yeah. So the, the day I I had been thinking 
um, my painting, I was going to collage a Scrabble board onto it. That was my goal. I was like, okay, I'm going to put a Scrabble board on it. Because I have these a couple Scrabble stories in my book, which when you read it, you'll find a couple Scrabble stories in there. And this was kind of some things I was grappling with at the time I was making this painting. And so I was like, well, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to use the colors of a Scrabble board. So I was like, okay, it's pink and brown and it's... Um, like a t off white. So in, in my head, that's what the Scrabble board was. When I actually pulled out the Scrabble board after I'd made the background, I was like, oh, these are not even the right colors, but that's a whole other thing. Um, and then in the in those creative intention sessions, we don't have them anymore, so, um, but in those creative intention sessions, I would pull a tarot card. Um, and the card I pulled, or, or, or an oracle card, sometimes it's tarot, sometimes it's oracle, just as like a thing to meditate on for the week. Um, I'm not saying it's like predicting your future, but it's like a way to connect with art and explore art in, a, in another way. So I pulled a, a card from my uh, deck, which is called, mm, let me see if I can find it. So I can tell you the name of the deck. Uh, yes, here it is. It's the Animal Apothecary deck by Kara Elizabeth. And it's a delightful deck by Hay House. And... Uh, and sorry, I just laughed at the cover of it, and you'll, and you'll know why in a minute. Um, but the card that I pulled is had a white tiger on it. No, had um, a tiger. Yeah, it does have a white tiger, and it's called Sacred. The card says Sacred Boundaries, and it has a white tiger and a hand, and it's there's a sun. And so I was thinking about this card, and I was reading the description for the card, and. And it was talking about um, all the stuff about the tiger. And so I had been pondering about the tiger too. And um, so I was like, oh, well, I'm feeling like I need to put tiger, like I'll, I'll, my background for in this painting will be tiger stripes. Um, and I can't remember if this was the first instance of tiger in my life at the time, but I was getting a lot of tiger there was tiger energy all over me. Like I was constantly um, getting confronted with tigers. It was really strange there for a while. And so I went upstairs to my art room. Um, our upstairs living room is, um, we turned into kind of a art studio for me and the children. Um, also their like little gaming area and stuff too is up there. but. I set up my got got my painting and I started to paint in pink, brown, and white, off white, uh, kind of a tiger stripe pattern, roughly, just kind of intuitively making these little like tiger stripe shapes. And you know, in my head, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna make a painting like Kate Wurtz will make a painting because her paintings are amazing. I love them so much. <laughs> You'll hear about it. Uh, I, I talk about this in the episode, with the second episode with Kate, but um, I love the way she paints. But then as soon as I started painting, I realized, oh, I don't paint like Kate. <laughs> I, like, I like things a little bit more like, a little bit more bold and uh, or like bold in terms of like um, uh, straighter lines and like bolder lines that are like more crisp, you know? So I, I learned some information about myself there but I so then I made so I made this whole background and then it just kind of sat for a while and I was like okay my whole goal with this painting is to follow my intuition I'm not going to overthink it I'm just going to do whatever my intuition tells me and my intuition was it was like it was like I was envisioning this like white shape on the right side like to take that takes up a big piece but I like it almost was, I knew it was like some sort of figure. I thought I was like, is it a person? Is it, a, what, what is it? But like in my head, it was just kind of white space. And um, I don't actually don't remember exactly what, when I knew um, that it was going to be a tiger. But like the, I kept getting, like I said, the tiger imagery, like it did show up in a book or it'd be on a website or like, <laughs> I, I was in communication with um, Sharice Johnson, who was on the podcast a couple weeks ago, and um, she in, in like we were Instagram DMing, and she put "free a mind" and she put a little bird, and then I immediately was like, "and the rest will follow." You know, it was like the Invogue lyrics, and like, oh, I was a huge Invogue Invogue fan when I was um, 
when I was in like middle school. And so I was like, oh, I need to hear that song. So I put on that song and the video and like, like nine seconds in, a freaking tiger pops up on the screen, like just for half a second, so fast that you couldn't, I couldn't even pause it to screenshot it. Like it was so fast. And I'm like, it was little stuff like that, like con t tigers constantly being like put in my field of view. It was really crazy. So I, I realized that like at some point, like I, I, I was envisioning this white space on the right side of this painting. And I was like, oh, okay, it's a tiger, a white tiger. And the, this card has a white tiger. And then the Animal Apothecary um, card deck has a white tiger on the cover too, which I did not even realize. I probably realized it then when I, the tigers were all over the place. But um, so then I like, okay, I was like, I'm going to paint this tiger. And um, I was like, that's weird. Why would I make a painting with a white tiger? That doesn't make any sense. But my whole goal with this painting was to follow my artist, follow my intuition and like treat it like I... Um, treat it like I do an art journal, which is that I let the art journal tell me what to do next, even if it's weird, even if it doesn't make sense. Usually it then it does make sense. At some later it makes sense. It's just um, even if it doesn't now. So it's like, well, I gotta trust it because that's what my intuition told me to do was to put this tiger on. And I, it feels weird. It feels like, you know, like I don't know if kids do now. Like I don't I don't think I have ever heard my kids mention a white tiger. But when I was a kid, everybody loved white tigers and everybody wanted them as pets. Like it was just like a thing people always loved. And so I just felt, I felt really cheesy putting a white tiger on my painting. It really did. So I did. I put, oh, And then I, um, in the stripes, I forgot to say too, I had collaged um, pages from Jane Eyre which is my favorite book but it has like the a perfect kind of aged it's a, like a really old paperback it's kind of yellowing um it looked really good on the stripes so I'd already collaged onto the stripes the Jane Eyre copies and so in the book or, or not in the book in the on the tiger I drew the tiger on and then I collaged where the stripes would be I collaged the, the Jane Eyre pages and then like did everything then I added black you know lines for the stripes and everything later but um so it's got my favorite book collaged all over it as well um and then like the last thing that happened was I went to a sound healing at the yoga studio and I was oh, my favorite things to do the sound healings at the yoga studio because the girl that does it um she also sings too and she does this like rain drum it's just amazing um she's celestial soul medicine on um instagram and sometimes she'll post some videos of her doing her singing and stuff so if you can check it out there's not a lot on there but i think she maybe is going to do it more because i've noticed more lately um so anyway i love her sound healings but i was in the sound healing kind of lay in there and then my my painting kind of was like in my field of view in my brain and suddenly I, I, I saw these like gold circles just kind of appear on the painting. Like while I was laying there, I was like, oh, there's my intuition telling me what to do next. So then I went in and added these like gold circles. And then my, and then that was it. And then my intuition was like, nope, no more. It like, it didn't want to tell me anything else. I was like, well, is it, is it unbalanced? You've got all this on the right, but not, not much on the left. And, um, but what I eventually learned is my intuition was telling me the painting was done, but I was like, overthinking it like paintings not actually done um so that's my painting story <laughs> but and, and and you know heather wants me to put it in the book and i'm feeling really self-conscious about it. i'm feeling really, really self-conscious about sharing it but i'm going to share it for this episode um because i did make a painting i finally did and now i'm like oh you know what I kind of want to make another one, like a similar one, but maybe with a different animal or like you kind of explore this, like what I made and see like what happens because I've always seen artists and they have these very particular styles and like, and like, I'm always, I'm always thinking I, everything I make has to be different and new and exciting. And I'm like, well, I kind of want to just make a painting like I already made and see what happens. And so that's what I'm going to do next. Um, and <laughs> The reason I'm telling you all this, one is the artist update, my art award of the year update. Um, I'm feeling the vulnerability of it and the vulnerability of sharing it. It's been done for quite a while, um, uh, probably a month now. Um, yeah, I have a, a picture open from when I was talking about it with Heather. And I took a picture of it on April 20th, or no, April 7th, and it's done. Today is May 4th, so it's been done at least a month or almost a month. Um, 
and uh, have not shared it. And I am, you know, y'all, y'all know me. If you follow me on Facebook, I share anything. <laughs> like I don't, I don't put out anything out there. Uh, I have not shared this because I'm too scared. Um, and I'm scared of being judged. I'm scared of people thinking, oh, like seeing that like middle school girl cheesiness of a, of a white tiger. Um, it's not good enough. It's not like the color. Like it doesn't feel like, um, I, I, I don't even know. I, like, I just, I don't even know. I just don't, I'm scared. I'm just scared to share it. Um, uh, I don't have to share it, but I'm going to, um, and then there's this whole thing about like knowing myself, right? So I, I kind of started with that and then I went on this tiger story tangent. <laughs> tangent. Um, it is related in that like the creation of this painting was me knowing myself was me trusting myself, was me following that sort of inner wisdom. And, and that has taken uh, a lifetime to develop. So I'm, I'm about to, I'm 41, I'm about to be 42 on June 1st. And um, I think, I think I am. No, oh no, no, that's right. I am. Uh, all of a sudden I realized I, might be wrong in my math, but no, I'm going to be 42, which is the meaning of life, which is kind of exciting. Um, if you've read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, um, I, in the, in the writing of this book and the creation of this artwork over the last year, um, I have learned so much about myself and, and you'll read about it in the book, but like long story, long, really long story, shortened a little bit <laughs> is that when I was young, I, um, I needed to be perfect, um, so that people wouldn't leave me. Right. So, um, I, I felt like an alien everywhere I went. I felt like I was too emotional. I felt like people weren't like me and why weren't they like me? What was, what, why did I feel so different? So I tried so hard to be perfect and to, to not stand out so that people would like me and that they would love me and they wouldn't leave me and that I wouldn't be alone. So I, I did really well in school. I mean, I'm a smart person, but like I was overly obsessed with being perfect in school. I, when I got out into the world and I realized I didn't necessarily have like the emotional literacy to handle the world, I, faked it as best as I could even more. Uh, I was highly ambitious and I knew like it, 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 the only thing that I had going for me, in my opinion, the only thing that I had going for me was my intelligence. So I really relied on that, my intelligence and my ambition. And that drove me for a long time. And my passion for art too was another driver. Um, but there was a lot about me that I was faking. Um, I learned in 2022, early 2022, that I'm, I have ADHD. I'm one of the many people, many women, especially right now, who are discovering they have ADHD because they didn't really think girls could have ADHD back then uh, when we were younger. Um, it's become kind of cliche to, to learn you have ADHD, but like it's true and it blew my mind and it still continues to blow my mind when I think about it. Um, I learned to stuff down my feelings. So like big feelings were too much for people. And that included my sad feelings. Um, and it included my insecurities and it included all of that, but it also included my good feelings. It also included like, I get really overly excited about things and like really excited about things and, um, things that a lot of people roll their eyes at, you know, like I, I want to talk to you about space for the next hour. And that's why I love this podcast is I can talk about all the things I love to talk about without getting my eyes rolled. Cause you all like, if you're listening, you also like to talk about anything too. Um, but for the longest time I thought I stuffed down that sort of that desire to be that curiousness that I had and that like easily excitableness 
um, excited by ideas and thoughts and psychology and philosophy and science and art and, you know, all of those things. And I had big feelings about all of it and I wanted to talk about all of it. Um, but then I couldn't, I couldn't like small talk to save my life. I couldn't, um, I couldn't make friends. I mean, I guess I had some friends, but it was like, it, I was so, um, in disbelief of my my worthiness of those friends that I didn't really know that I had friends like they they were there I just didn't believe them that they liked me um I'm talking about like my 20s I guess uh and then it, it was again you can read all about this in the book it's all through art um and I'm not spoiling anything there's so there's you know it's a, it's a lot deeper than what I can share in a couple minutes but like, I was continually masking who I was. Uh, I was continually um, hiding my feelings. Um, I was continually pushing down everything that I was passionate about because it might get, you know, it might make people realize that I'm an alien, you know, that might, and then they might, like, realize all the things that I'm hiding and then leave me. And slowly over the last many number of years, as I sort of released a lot of that kind of unworthiness, I released a lot of the shame, I really I, I kind of healed from trauma, like um, learned how to feel my feelings, um, learned how to listen to my intuition. Um, once I removed like all of those layers and like found the real me underneath, like and removed all the things like the, the identities that society placed on me, realized what was really truly important to me and realized that I was holding myself to standards that were other people's standards. Like I used to think I was like really good at doing spreadsheets and I really liked to do spreadsheets and I was really proud that I, but then I was like, I made, I made that up. <laughs> this is not true. Like it's just not true. And like, how did I, how did I, make people believe that it was so good at that when I'm really such a mess. Like if you were to see my office right now, well, I'm, I'm in the middle of cleaning it out, but like, I'm a mess. I like, I, I am disorganized. I can't keep trap paper. I can't send a birthday card to save my life. There's all these things like I was stuffing down and I was trying to not disappoint anybody by like all of my failures of able to like, um, keep track of things that I was like, stuffing down who I really was and faking it so hard that I ended up getting really burnt out and pushing for things that I thought I wanted that I didn't actually want. And so like I have been slowly removing all of that stuff, all of the shame about who I am, like learning to accept who I am, learning to be um, okay with who I am and how I overshare and how I'm, I'm emotional and how, you know, like, all the things that I used to hide about myself. And now I'm like, learn, and then I'm learning who I am without all of those things, without the masks, without the hiding, without the um, worrying what other people think, without, you know, all of that stuff. Once you remove it, it's like, oh, what's here? <laughs> like, and what I found is I'm an artist and I'm a poet and I'm a writer. And I have been all along, but I just, I'm tearing up because, but I had, I had, I had put that part of me stuffed in a box really far down. Um, you know, I told you the story of sort of refinding uh, poems and, and writing poems um, on, a, on a past episode. And I think that episode is called Reclaiming or Finding Lost Parts of My Identity, but something like that. I don't remember. But, you know, all of that, like, what does that actually give me? knowing who I am, um, and how does that impact my life? Um, so as I'm telling you what it gives for me, I want you to think about like, what does knowing yourself give to you? What, what are you, um, and as you're hearing me say what it does for me, imagine what it could do for you. And one of the things is, um, you know, knowing who I am and knowing what's important to me, I 
and I've, of course I'm not perfect at this and no one is. I mean, I think we live in a society where there, there will be judgment. There will be all this stuff, but, um, I don't have to hold myself to other people's standards anymore. So one of the things that, um, we talk about in the art connection circle is our values, our value systems and like what, um, what's in, what are the like core things that are important to us? And I have an activity that I lead you through and you kind of create your list of values and also create sort of like, um, essences on how you want to feel in the world and how you might, um, make that happen in your life. Um, but one of the things that I've, and I've, I've probably told this story before, but well, maybe I'll tell it. Maybe since I know I've already told this story before, I'll tell a different one, which is I have a coaching client who, um, she's more sort of spontaneous and she's more, um, not necessarily a planner. She's, that's exactly like I am too. And so, but her husband is a very, like very much a planner. They're very much a, we're going to do this on this day for the, like when they're planning their vacations, we're going to do this on this day. We're going to eat at these places and you know, we're going to do this, this, and this on this day. So that we make sure we have time for this. And these two things are over here by this. And we know we want to plan it all this way. And and she doesn't participate in a lot of that planning because that's not her nature. That's not how she is. She's more spontaneous and she wants to kind of explore and see and, and let whatever the, like let the day unfold. And so she was feeling a lot of guilt about not contributing to the planning of these vacations that they go on. Um, and and the thing is, I was like, well, you know, her value, and, I, and so I told her, I was like, you, you know, your value is um, adventure and discovery and, or, you know, something like that. Um, and you're more spontaneous. You know, you know this about yourself. So, of course, planning is, is not fun for you because you don't like to know ahead of time. You don't want, you don't know how you're going to feel that day. And so she was holding herself to a standard that she is really unable to meet. And so she was feeling a lot of guilt about that and a lot of like, um, per perhaps shame, but I know, I know for sure it was guilt. And, and then like her husband on the other end, um, I don't know. I, you know, I don't know him. So I didn't, I don't know what he was thinking about her. <laughs> That's unknown to me, but like, you know, he, I don't think he cared about this, but she did tell one story that like there was one day of a trip where she just, um, like they looked at street art and things and kind of followed her whims. And then he, he mentioned to her like later that day or whatever, how great it was to, to share her passion on that. And like, and so I was like, well, you know, your value is this is adventure and discovery. His value is, is, um, I don't know, predictability, net consistency, plan, something planning related. So yeah, it's so foreign to me. I can't even think of a word for it, but like he, he's holding her to, he's feeling like he has to meet her standards. She's feeling she has to meet his standard. And like, you're not you're not meeting in the middle. You're not like understanding each other. And so you're, you're creating um, judgment about yourself that is not even about things that you care about. And so I invited her to consider for a future trip to plan a day where she gets to be in charge that day, that there's nothing on the calendar, but whatever she like, whatever adventure she wants them to have that day. And so like it's planned spontaneity, right? So, but knowing that about herself allows her to give herself some grace and allows her to even celebrate the parts of herself that um, are maybe missing, like the, celebrate what her, her sense of adventure brings to their relationship. And, you know, I held myself to my sister standard my, for a very long time because she's an extrovert and I'm an introvert she's a lawyer and I'm an artist, you know, it's like, I was like, well, I have to be like her. I have to be, I have to be, um, an extrovert. And if not, if I'm not an extrovert, then there's something wrong with me. Um, and so for a very long time until I knew introverts, introverts existed, which was not until my twenties, I was like, Oh, I was holding myself to standards that are of other people. They're not even my own standards. So, 
knowing yourself better allows you to be able to um, feel more confident in who you are and what you bring to the world and not feel guilt or shame for um, being things that you don't even want to be or being ways that you don't even want to be. Um, another thing that it brings you is sort of better communication in your relationship. So I mentioned my client and how, you know, her knowing that about her husband, her husband knowing that about her allowed them to kind of meet and, and get to a place of understanding. And the same thing has happened in my household. My husband uh, learned he was autistic last year in 2022 as well. And just this, this knowledge of our neurodiversities and the knowledge of how we work allows us to have so much better communication. It allows us to um, express our needs better. It allows us to um, not make assumptions about other people, which allows us to have a deeper and more understanding relationship. When in the past it might've been, I would be resenting him for something that he wasn't doing because I was expecting him to meet my standard. Um, and him not knowing what my standards were because he has his brain works differently than mine and he doesn't naturally know like the sort of assumed social cues you know like it's that's not something that his brain like picks up on and but i was holding him to to that um in my head so just knowing that about him allowed me to have more understanding about him and it it's allowed us to like have deeper conversations about who we are and everything. Um, another thing, like an example from the art connection circle, when we look at these values, um, is that, and we also in our connection circle do some visioning. So we, I have some guided meditations that kind of, um, or I say meditations, it's just one, but, uh, oh no, there's two. Sometimes I do two, sometimes I do one. Um, different, they're different, but you know, you kind of vision what you want your life to be and what you want, um, to feel like. And, you know, once you kind of know that about yourself and know who you are, um, it allows you to make changes in your life now to meet those. Cause a lot of people are like, okay, I'll, my life will be better when I get this, when I, um, have this amount of money or I have this job or I, um, my body looks a certain way or whatever it is. Um, but really there are things you can do now to feel that way. And I think one of the best testimonials I, I've gotten for the art connection circle is, um, one of the participants says, um, nothing has changed in my life, but I have changed. And so now, like when she started, she was kind of in a kind of toxic environment. She was um, unhappy in her environment and kind of was kind of stuck in those emotions. But by the end, she had become a leader in her environment to make changes. She knew what she wanted in her life and knew how she wanted to feel. And so she made steps to feel that way. And so even though she's in the same job with the same family in the same house, you know, all the, all the things, like if you look on the outside, the things are the same. Um, but internally she feels so much better because she knows what, who she is and what she wants. And that is so powerful and it's so hard to describe. So I'm trying my best to, to describe, um, what it can do for you. And it same is true for me. Like I, I write in the book about a time in my life where it was really when, um, my business was, was not its most successful, but it was like really going well. Everything was great, but there was this, um, it was a burnout. It was, um, it was, it was a perfectionism. It was trying to be, you know, make everything look so pretty and make everything and do everything right and follow all the rules for online business and um, you know, like, but if you were to take a look at my life, like everything would, would look great. Like I have this business that's, that's doing well. I have a beautiful family. I have friends, like everything was great, but there was, there were some like deep undercurrents of anxiety and of, um, of, of, of ignoring things that I knew to be true of not following my intuition and pushing some things down that I knew about that, about myself that I, that I was kind of ignoring. And that was causing a lot of like headaches and skin pain and like all these things. And, you know, and then you look at my life now, it's like, 
everything is basically the same. I have the same friends. I have the same job. I have, you know, I've drastically changed sort of the, the scope of my work really since then. But like, but I have done all of this work in the interim to where I feel like I don't have that undercurrent of anxiety, of guilt, of shame, of of striving to 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 reach a goal that's not even a goal I want to reach. Like all of that has been released. Um, all of those expectations that I had on myself have been released that now I feel um, so much better moving through my world. And, and the, the sense of calm and of peace and of, of knowing and of um, living a life in alignment with who I am and what I want, what I want for my life um, creates a really amazing, um, uh, environment for myself. So, uh, if this is something that you want to build in your own life and you want the tools to do it, I do have a program, the Art Connection Circle. Um, and in the program we do, we talk about your vision, we talk about your values, we talk about your beliefs. Um, I'm not talking about like religious beliefs, but I'm talking about like your, um, the things that you, the stories that you're telling yourself about the, the world that you live in. And are those things true or are they not true? Like, um, and, and how that can impact, um, the way, the way you're operating and the way you're living in, in the world. Um, we talk about, um, the essences that you want to live into and, and into embody, um, how to be who you want to be now instead of waiting until you have it. And then um, we do all of that through looking at art. So it's really, um, you know, it's a lot of really vulnerable topics. It's a lot of like digging deep within yourself, but you do it in a, such a safe way with art as the sort of space holder. Like it's there to, to hold all of those big feelings and all of that, those themes. And all of the art that I choose is very much tied to um, I choose them because it's good for, you know, the, the artwork that we look at for, you know, the topic of beliefs is very much tied to like that theme, but whatever comes out of that conversation is going to be different in every session because we have different people in the room with different experiences and you're all going to get something different from it. And that's, what's so powerful. And it kind of goes back to what I said earlier in this um, very ping pongy, um, podcast episode is that, you know, um, the artist can't control what we get, what, what the, the viewer gets from it. And it, even when I create this program, I can control what, what you're going to get from it. Like you're going to get from it, whatever you need to get from it. And I've just created the container that allows you to explore these really personal topics and you do it in a room with other people a zoom room <laughs> with other people who are doing the same type of work who are digging deep into themselves who are exploring the art alongside of you um i have a testimonial quote um on the i don't know if it's on the sales page but i have one but it's like i don't yeah oh it is on the it doesn't matter um and it's like i didn't realize how deep we could get so quickly because you know the the art just allows you to get deep deeper and deeper and deeper and i'm i'm sure you've seen that in these podcast episodes where um you know all of a sudden we're looking at a work of art and all of a sudden we're talking about god or we're talking about like the universe or we're talking you know like it's it just Art allows us to go to places that we wouldn't go otherwise. And it's it's a really lovely and beautiful experience. So, um, and you get really connected with the other people in the room because although they're they're different from you and that they're around the world, we've had people from Ireland, from the Philippines, from um, uh, Colombia. I think it's Colombia. No, it's not. Panama. Shoot. South America. Now suddenly I can't remember the country. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, like we've had people from around the world, but they're all, you realize how much you have in common with those people. And you realize how um, talking about these sort of deep con, these deep concepts about yourself and being vulnerable and opening up allows you to create really deep connections with other people. And that's going to, that's going to translate into your life too, that, you know, having those learning to how to have these big conversations with other people, um, will encourage you to be able to open up in your regular life too to the people um, around you. Um, so all of that is happening. 
in this program. And it is just so beautiful and so special. And I hope that you consider joining us. If you go to artandself.com circle, you can get that information and on um, how to join. And one of the things that I'm adding now, so this will this will be the third, I guess, third and fourth time I'm running the program, the two different cohorts this time. I've already run it twice. And one of the things that I'm adding this go around is that all people who have who have participated in the Art Connection Circle are getting added to sort of an alumni group, which will have lifetime access to this alumni group. And one of the benefits of this alumni group is that you get to participate in um, like uh, co-working, co-art making sessions together um, a couple times a month. So it's like the creativity cocoon where we get together and we make art together. We're going to be doing that. And then you'll, you're, you're going to be invited to that for a lifetime. So you will be able to see, stay in touch with not only the people from your cohort, which you, you, who you've gotten close to, but other people who have also gone through this work. So, um, that's lifetime offer is kind of a new thing that, um, that I am excited to add to the program. So yes, you're paying for, you know, the, the, the investment in this program, you're paying for the time spent, you're paying for the activities and, you know, the learning about yourself, but the value is so much deeper than just that time spent. It is, um, the transformation that you get afterwards, the peace that you've added to your life, the understanding of yourself and how that's going to impact the decisions that you make moving forward that are going to be more in more alignment with who you are, feeling better about yourself moving forward. The impact is not, you know, just for the six weeks. You're not just going to learn a thing and then move on. The transformation that you get from this program is, is, is a lifetime um, from here on out things that you now know that you can't, you can't unknow transformation that you've had that you can't, you can't untransform. So um, the value is, is really Im immeasurable on the impact that it can have on your life. So thank you for listening to my rambling. I, I'm looking back about my tiger story. And I'm like, where did that even with that? What was that? But it was me, I guess it was me, <laughs> the result of me getting in touch with who I am and finding my artist within. Um, Anyway, I'm going to share my tiger on the show notes so you can see it. And I'm scared to do it, but I'm going to do it. So thank you so much for listening. I hope to see you in the Art Connection Circle this summer, if not in a future session. Um, but they are, um, one of them runs June and July, uh, starts in mid-June. And um, there's seven weeks, two hours a week. So it's a, um, in the past, I've done it, um, shorter sessions, but I decided to kind of make it a little bit longer um, to allow us to have the full space and time with the artwork and allow it to really unfold on us. And then um, you get the Facebook group of uh, your cohort and then the, after your sessions over the lifetime access. And then um, July and August, oh, so June and July, I think the sessions are in the morning on Thursdays, morning my time central. And then... Um, July and August, the sessions are in the afternoon on Thursdays. So hope you can join me. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out cindy at artandself.com uh, or cindy at artclasscurator.com. They go to the same place. You can send me a DM on Instagram or Facebook as well. But I, um, I look forward to meeting you in there if you, um, if you decide to join us this summer. All right. Thank you so much for listening and I hope to um, talk to you later and I will be back next week with another episode. I have three, three, yes, yeah, sorry. I'm <laughs> making sure. So, uh, three episodes recorded of our conversations ready to be published. So I've got some really amazing conversations coming down the pipe and um, awesome. That's all for today. I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to Art and Self. And if you loved what you heard and you want to be a part of these exciting conversations about art, I would love to invite you to join the Art Connection Circle. In the Art Connection Circle, we get together in an intimate small group and have deep, 
conversations about works of art centered around our own self-development, our own personal experience, and what we bring to the conversation, just like we do in these art conversations on the podcast. You can find more information out about this program at artandself.com slash circle, or you can click the link in the show notes. You can also find links to the artworks that we discussed over on the show notes, and then you can also find me on Instagram and on Facebook. Just search for Cindy Ingram Art and Self. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful week and I will see you next time.